Hi everyone, I'm Samson and welcome to our talk on reliability testing for NLP systems. Recent work and reporting has shown that many NLP systems contain harmful biases and are vulnerable to noisy and adversarial inputs. These are issues of robustness and fairness. But we can also think of them as different facets of reliability, which is defined as the degree to which a system, product or component performs specified functions under specified conditions for a specified period of time. There are many ways to improve an NLP system's reliability at various points in the NLP pipeline, but in this paper we are most interested in evaluating a system's reliability. Here's an overview of various methods we currently use to test NLP systems. What we usually think of as test accuracy is really held out accuracy, where a subset of the dataset is not trained on and used to test the trained model's performance. However, this setting only models the expected or average case performance and assumes the real-world deployment distribution is identical to the training distribution. In reality, this is often not a valid assumption. And we may also be interested in the worst case performance in addition to the expected performance so we can get an idea of how badly an NLP or ML system could potentially fail in the real world. Therefore, we propose to adapt the idea of reliability testing from software engineering and other engineering fields to NLP. Given the definition of reliability we saw earlier, we believe reliability testing methods should be designed with some or all of the following objectives in mind. First, since we are concerned with the real-world reliability of an NLP system, tests should simulate the unique challenges of the linguistic and social environment the system will be deployed in. Second, reliability tests should also test an NLP system's ability to generalize beyond the training distribution. This includes noisy inputs, legitimate variation in language use, and so on. Third, they should highlight biases encoded by the NLP system. Although biases may enter the NLP pipeline at multiple points, what matters from the user's perspective are the actual predictions generated by the NLP system. Therefore, for evaluation purposes, we believe it is sufficient to treat the system as a black box deployed in some predefined environment. Finally, it is necessary but insufficient to know how well an NLP system will perform on average. For most applications, we should also measure how badly the system can fail in the target environment. This allows us to set minimum safety or fairness thresholds below which the system should be prevented from being deployed. This can enable the enactment of minimum standards for AI or NLP-based products. For machine learning-based systems in particular, research has also shown that the worst-case performance can differ significantly from the average case. Therefore, measuring it gives us something tangible to improve. In this paper, we present a possible approach to reliability testing. We propose to simulate real-world variation by perturbing inputs to the NLP system at test time. These perturbations can either be randomly sampled from an appropriate distribution to measure average case performance, or optimized against the NLP system under tests to measure worst case performance. To simulate unique environments, we propose to mix and match the perturbation distributions. We can then use the performance drop compared to the held-out test performance as an approximation of real-world reliability. As we hinted at earlier, we envision two types of reliability tests, average case tests and worst case tests. The primary difference between these two tests is that the average case test samples the perturbations from a distribution similar to the real-world distribution, while the worst case test is optimized in adversary to the NLP system under test. Accordingly, the worst case test only requires knowledge of the range of possible inputs but not their probabilities of occurrence. So you might now be wondering how can we actually implement reliability tests. Going back to our overview of existing evaluation methods, we see a number of solutions that have been proposed to address the disadvantages of held out accuracy. Unfortunately, although some of these methods measure test performance when the training and testing distributions don't match, most of them can only be used to measure average case performance. Adversarial attacks appear to be the most promising, but suffer from a lack of nuance around how robustness is defined. Let's see how adversarial attacks can be adapted into worst case tests by fixing this issue. First, an extremely quick introduction to adversarial attacks. 
In general, an adversarial attack aims to maximize an NLP model's error by perturbing the inputs without changing the expected output. You might notice that a worst case test has essentially the exact same goal, with a caveat. The perturbations must simulate specific types of variation, so we can mix and match them to simulate specific environments. However, many existing adversarial attacks treat the idea of robustness as a singular concept, simply focusing on breaking the victim NLP system without much restriction on the type of perturbations used. This has eventually led to the use of black box models as a core component of the attack on black box models. Therefore, we propose to constrain perturbations to a specific type of variation. This extra constraint then allows us to use adversarial techniques to create worst case tests, and it's important for individual tests to be interpretable and for the test suite to be controllable. One fantastic way of thinking about variation that we found while preparing the camera ready is Barbara Planck's variety space, which is an n-dimensional space, each dimension corresponding to a type of variation, for example in the figure on the right. She uses the example of data sets, but we can also think of real-world environments as subspaces within this huge latent space. This framing makes it obvious that we can then simulate different environments by introducing or restricting variation along specific dimensions and tweaking the perturbation distributions corresponding to each dimension. Here are some categories of dimensions. Please check out our paper for a more detailed taxonomy. We know that computer scientists are not experts in everything, so how can we tap on the expertise of other disciplines to ensure our reliability tests represent the target linguistic and social environment well? For example, here is a possible mapping of experts to the categories of variation we saw earlier. Constructing the actual tests may require significant technical knowledge, but what if we could decouple the creation of reliability requirements of a system from the actual tests? Introducing Doctor, a six-step process for carrying out reliability testing. For each NLP system or group of NLP systems, we first define a set of reliability requirements that the system is expected to meet. This is the most important step in the entire process, and by defining dimensions as high-level concepts at this stage, Non-NLP experts from other disciplines can contribute their expertise towards defining appropriate reliability requirements. Next, we operationalize the dimensions as distributions that perturbations can be sampled from. We then construct the actual tests and test the system. If the system meets all the requirements and is deployed, we should monitor the system's behavior post-launch and refine the reliability requirements and tests if there is unexpected behavior the original requirements failed to capture. Breaking down the testing process in this manner creates multiple opportunities for interdisciplinary collaboration throughout the testing process. We now elaborate on the specifics of designing reliability requirements. We can think of a set of reliability requirements as a sort of spec sheet that describes the expected reliability of an NLP system when it encounters different types of variation in the real world. The types of variation are defined as dimensions and should be customized to closely describe the linguistic and social environment the system will be used in. Each dimension has a corresponding threshold the system must perform above to be considered reliable and is measured in terms of a predefined metric. For simplicity and ease of comparison, we recommend using the standard metrics for the NLP task. Importantly, the dimensions are described at a relatively high level at this stage to lower the barrier to interdisciplinary collaboration. Another way of thinking about reliability requirements is that they describe what to measure, how to measure it, and an acceptable level of performance. Once appropriate dimensions have been identified, computer scientists can then operationalize them as actual data distributions. Perturbations are then sampled from these distributions when testing the NLP system. The remaining four steps follow the same general steps as popular iterative development workflows. Build tests, test the system, perform post-market monitoring, and iterate. We go into much greater detail in our paper and also include a hypothetical case study to make these concepts more concrete. So where do we go from here? We see a number of challenges to overcome before we can truly realize the full potential of reliability testing. First, the identification and operationalization of relevant dimensions for a variety of environments. Although we describe them as sequential steps in Doctor, 
These steps can be done in parallel and independently by interdisciplinary researchers. NLP practitioners building production systems will then only need to consult the literature to identify applicable dimensions and their corresponding operationalizations. Another challenge would be deciding which dimensions are prioritized in each set of reliability requirements. This is primarily a question of power and can only be overcome by ensuring that the concerns of impacted communities are well represented. Next, the accuracy of reliability tests also hinges on the fidelity of the simulation of variation in the real world. This is similar to issues plaguing automatic metrics for natural language generation and remains a challenge to be overcome. One solution in the meantime is to use both manually curated test sets together with reliability tests to get the best of both worlds. Finally, another way to improve simulation fidelity is to use methods that can guarantee the validity of all perturbed inputs. However, this is still an open problem, but all is not lost. We can still use simple but interpretable rules for simulating variation in the meantime. To summarize, existing problems of fairness, bias, and robustness can be viewed as issues of unreliability. Performing reliability testing along dimensions of variation can highlight issues before launch. Reliability tests evaluate the expected and worst case performance, and we can repurpose adversarial attacks into worst case tests. Critically, we believe decoupling requirement definition from test construction will enable greater interdisciplinary collaboration and result in more accurate reliability requirements. Finally, we describe DOCTOR, an approach for implementing reliability testing in an organization. Thanks for listening and you can find our paper at the link below.